wonderful day. The Bible said this is the day the Lord has made. I'm going to be grumpy and grippy. No, that's not what it says. This is the day the Lord has made. I am going to rejoice and be exceedingly glad. Listen, I want you to get happy. Really. I, I think the Christians should be the happiest people on earth. I really mean that. Uh, don't hang around with those sour, cynical people. Really, don't do it because uh, what's on them will try to jump off on you. Uh, uh, God wants you to have the joy of the Lord. It says in the Bible that Jesus Christ was anointed with the oil of gladness far above all of his brothers. Isn't that cool? Now, here, here's what I want to talk about a little bit. Have you ever had some in, in encounters that was uh, so that really so important you write them down? Now, here's one. I, 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 I used to, uh, I was doing an interview with the last person that Smith Wigglesworth sent out to minister. And Arthur Burke, he was old, old then. <clears throat> and uh, we're sitting at a table, and it's an interview. There's a microphone in the middle of the table. There's a camera shooting over his shoulder, one shooting over mine. And Arthur Burke was just kind of really uh, uh, pretty subdued. And uh, so I said to him, Brother Burke, can you tell me, are the stories we've heard about Smith Wigglesworth are they exaggerated? Oh, my goodness. Here's what Brother Burke did. He jumped to his feet, little bitty wisp of a man, took his fist and went wham and hit right in the middle of the uh, table. Microphones were, <laughs> he says, contrary, young man. They toned them down. <laughs> Listen, Smith Wigglesworth, you should, you should research some of the mighty things that happened with Smith Wigglesworth. I'll, I'll, I'll share with you some of the things he said. Here, this is a Smith Wigglesworth quote. There are boundless possibilities for us if we dare to act in God and dare to believe in God. I mean, listen, it's limitless. I can do what? All things through Christ? Listen, let me read that again. There are boundless possibilities. See, but if we sit back and go again, oh, I don't know, you know, I don't know. No, you've got everything you need through the Holy Spirit to accomplish the works of Jesus. Isn't that something? Say so yes. Uh, here we go. There are boundless possibilities for us if we dare to act in God and dare to believe God. Now, here's another one. Catherine Kuhlman. Uh, any of y'all remember Catherine Kuhlman? Oh, boy. I was a Baptist preacher when she was really, really famous. And... Um, Catherine, uh, at that time, would wear glass slippers with a, you know, you could, uh, it, you know, it was pretty wild. And she had flowing gowns, you know, and she'd be on TV, and she'd come out like this, and she'd whirl, and she'd say, have you been waiting on me? I'd have the controls and say, no, ma'am, I don't think so, click, click, you know. And now I've tried to buy up every video, every old video she's got, because you talk about a mighty display of the power of God. Catherine Kuhlman had it. Isn't that something? Uh, I went and interviewed the lady that uh, traveled with uh, Catherine Kuhlman. I wanted to know all I could about her. And here's what she, uh, she said. She said the anointing on her life was not really meant for her. It was meant for men, but they wouldn't take it, so God gave it to her. See, if you don't pick up the anointing, somebody else will. You can't? Oh, okay. The mantle. Okay, here we go. Here's what Catherine Kuhlman said. It is when active faith dares to believe God to the point of action, something has to happen. See, we've got we to gotta activate our faith. James 1.22, James 1.22 says, we must become doers of the word and not mere hearers. Uh, it, it, it's, we, it's not enough just to hear it. We've got to activate it. We've got to put to work what God has to, has to say to us. And uh, so I, that was, I've got a couple of more. Okay, here we go. You ready? Catherine Kuhlman, bless her. I, I tell you, that's wonderful. Uh, they have been some mighty, mighty people uh, on the earth, hadn't they? Good gracious. My, my team was off in Bulgaria one time, and uh, we, we got one of these che uh, cheap night uh, uh, flights, you know, when it's way up in the morning. And we get on there, and we, I think I had 18 people with me. And we look up there, just in, in the coach section, there sits Billy Graham. He had been over there in Moscow. Uh, and so in, anyway, uh, he tried to carry my wife's luggage. Isn't that something? Billy Graham. And uh, I'm standing in the uh, 33,000 feet in the air. 
and Billy Graham standing by me, and I'm prophesying to him. Here's what I said to him. Dr. Graham, the Lord has convinced me that he's going to use mighty signs and wonders to win the harvest in the last days. He put his hand right here on my shoulder, and he said to me, Son, I believe every word of that. Isn't that, isn't that cool? I'm telling you, there have been some mighty people that have come across the face of this earth. And I'm telling you what, you need to be a world changer. You need to be a world changer. God created you to be a world changer. Here's a cool thing. It says that God chose us in eternity past to live in the present to forge the future. See, he chose you before you were you. Isn't that cool? See, a lot of people go, well, I don't know if I've got purpose. God wrote every day of your life down in his book. I like, I like to study where God writes in, in his book. See, that's, everybody that gets saved gets written in the Lamb's Book of Life. But if you want God to write your name in uh, uh, his book, it says this. If you'll get a bunch of your friends together, sit down and talk about how much you love God, uh, he'll take notice of it and write your name in the book. That's in the Bible. That's Malachi 3.16. Malachi 3.16, get a lot of your buddies together, sit down and start talking about how much you love and uh, appreciate the Lord. He'll take notice of it and write your name. Ah, don't you like that? Oh, yeah, boy, some handsome-looking people up there. Don't you love John and Carol? I, I'm telling you, they've been mighty, mighty, mighty used of God to really release the Holy Ghost. Isn't that something? I don't know why people are afraid of the Holy Ghost. I'll tell you why they're afraid of the Holy Ghost. You ready? I asked the Lord. I said, Lord, why are so many pastors afraid of the Holy Ghost? He said, because they cannot control him. <laughs> see, they can't control him. He's like the wind. You hear it coming, you don't know, you see the action of, you don't know where it came from, not sure where it went. I'm telling you, you need to quit trying to figure out. The natural mind receives not the things of the Spirit, it's foolishness to them, neither can you know it, it must be spiritually discerned. You can't figure it out. The most minute little simple thing from God is so profound till uh, you can't do it with your natural mind. The Lord stood right in front of me. He does things that are uh, profound. The Lord Jesus stood right in front of me, took his finger just like this, and he did like this, right like that. He said, Bobby, do you know what a printed word is? I said to him, apparently not. He said, a printed word is a thought you can see. Now, that's profound. Aren't you glad that God put his thoughts in this book where we can see them? And so that's pretty wild. A thought you can see. Wow. I, I like that. Jesus wants to fellowship with you. He really does. He wants you to, he, to spend time with him. You say, well, how do I do that, Bobby? Matthew 6, 6 is a great way. It says, enter into the quietest room in your house. Shut the door. And if, if you, I think you should set a chair for Jesus to come sit in and just invite him and just talk to him. Just You can talk to him. It says, my sheep hear my voice. Wow, he can talk to you. You're his sheep. John 10, 3, my sheep hear my voice. John 10, 27 says, they'll flee. Take away from other voices because they don't know it. Aren't you glad? Now, all right, here we go. F. F. Bosworth. Faith begins where the will of God is known. I like 1 John 5, 14. This is the confidence that we have in God. If we ask him anything according to his word, we know that he hears us. If we know that he hears us, we're totally confident we're going to get what we're asking. 1 John 5, 14. See, prayer is not so much a shot in the dark. It's a leap in the light. God, God will make you these promises, and then you start saying, Lord, your word declares. Is that, that, is that what Jesus did when the devil was tempting him? It's written. It's written. See, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because we don't know what's written. We've got to study to show ourselves approved unto God. Get in, get in a quiet place and study the Word of God. Meditate upon it. Okay, now, I've got, I got something to talk to you about today. I, I've got some stuff. Oh, my. Did you know I've got a stack of Bibles about this high that I've studied them till the oil on my fingers would wear the holes in the paper? That, that's how I memorize the Bible. Uh, anyway, you say, well, oh, Bobby, I thought it'd be easier than that. No, no, yeah, it's pretty wild. Now, here's what I want to talk to you about. Do you have sort of favorite parts of the Bible that you want to visit? I do. Here, here's one. You ready? Psalms 27. 
I like one, one phase of Psalms 27 says, When you said, Seek my face, my heart cried out to you, Yes, Lord, your face I'm going to seek. See, when he said it, Seek my face, instead of going, Well, I'm busy, I got to go shopping. When he said, Seek my face, David cried out, Yes, God, your face I'm going to seek. It also says in Psalms 27, says, What? What would have happened to me had I not believed that I'd see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living? See, it encourages us to get into the Bible, and then we see activities of God, and it builds our faith. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by what? The Word of God. Oh, get into the Word. I don't care. You can't substitute anything for the Word. Uh, it's the sword of the Spirit. Okay, let's look at this. Psalms 27, verse 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my foes, come up to eat up my flesh, they stumble and fall. Though a whole army, a whole army is going to camp against me, I will not fear. So you better read it to get some courage. You understand greater is he that's in you than he that is in the world? You do know this, that the devil would if he could kill every one of us in this room today. That's his method of operation. He comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. And I'm telling you guys, he will if you allow him. We have got to give the devil no place. The only place he should have is under your feet. Yes. Romans 16, 20 said, the God of peace will crush Satan under your feet shortly. He said, I give you power to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. All right. Don't, I, I like that. See, the devil's more afraid of you than you are him. Oh, man. Uh, now, can I tell you some of the experiences that we've had with demon-possessed people in church? Why, well, sure, Bobby, go ahead. Here we are. <laughs> we're in a room about three times. As, well, it's a basketball arena. And uh, we were ministering there, and we, we called people forward that uh, needed to be healed. And, oh, man, that thing just was a, just a sea of people in line. And the pastor's with me, and we're coming down through the line praying for people to lay hands on. The Bible said, and you shall lay hands upon the sick, and they shall recover. Not a 50-50 chance. They shall. See, and God won't lie. So we're going through there praying for the sick. And we're, uh, we're going down the line, and about, I guess, maybe five or six people further on down the line there's a tall man there and i can tell that he has a very aggressive cancer but god's going to heal him from this cancer and so behind him was a little granny uh, you've seen little granny kind of gray blue hair and j just a little old lady but she's praying in tongues and every time i would listen to her tongue my spirit would turn in like this just like that i said god what's the deal with the granny over there he said She's cursing you in a tongue. So, the pastor's with me now uh, uh, that had put this meeting on. And I said, sir, this little lady back here is cursing us in a tongue. And guess what the pastor said to me? That's absurd. She leads our prayer group. I said, God, what do you want me to do? He said, I want you to bind and command her to speak in English what she's speaking in that tongue. Now, I won't say what she you and F your Jesus. That's what she said. Only said it. The pastor turned white as a sheet, blew around the mouth and said, what are we going to do? I said, let's take her off the prayer team. Don't you think? <laughs> Most churches are split by the intercessory prayer group. The, the devil saw that there's a mighty move of God coming so he would infiltrate churches with witches. To a house divided can't stand. And I'm telling you guys, that was pretty wild. Uh, listen, here's one. I'm in a civic center, big old building down there in Texas doing a meeting. Me and my wife, and the, uh, the, uh, it's, it's pretty neat, called a little girl out. She was the cutest little thing about like that. Had uh, pigtails or uh, braids, that's what she had. Had braids, just cute as a bug. And I'm talking to her, and there's cameras filming this, and it's going to go on a worldwide television thing and so anyway I, i'm talking to her and she's just got she's got the sweetest little voice like that like yes i, I go to school um, I, I, I like i like cheerleading and stuff like that just as calm and cool and i thought that is so nice and there she is right here in front of me i don't know there's a couple of thousand people there and i saw a little bitty chain 
like a jewelry chain around her neck. And the Lord said, ask her about the chain. So I took this finger and this thumb, and I reached over there to her like this, and I said, honey, what is this? And when my finger and thumb touched that chain, her whole face contorts. I mean, it gets the most grotesque, twisted, and out of her, oh, man, out of her voice came this, leave the bitch alone, she's mine. Uh-oh, what happened to little sweet girl? She was a cheerleader, you know. But see, she had been birthed and given to the devil by her parents. And boy, leave the B-I-T-C-H alone, she's mine. And out of my mouth came these words, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, and they that dwell therein. So I used that verse to take back every curse they'd put on this girl. See, the devil said, she's mine. He didn't pay any price for her. The earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof, and they that dwell therein. And I said this, and when, when she gets delivered, now this is crude. She puked, and I, I really I'm, don't think I'm exaggerating at all. A spew of puke went from here to that wall. Uh, and see, we're filming this, and they put it on worldwide TV. And so her parents said, we're suing you. I said, get you a number and get in line. <laughs> yeah. And I'm telling you, see, we got to rescue the perishing. There's a war going on. And, and listen, the, it, it's, it seems like uh, young people are infatuated with the dark supernatural. It's because the church is so light in the supernatural. We need to get more. Listen, if, if we just start doing what the Bible says, that it'll blow all this other stuff away. Okay, let, let, are you there in Psalms 27? Yes, Bobby, I'm here. Here we go. Psalms 27, the Lord is, not was, is my light. I don't know why we stumble in the dark when God says, My word is a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path. Psalms 119, verse 130 says, The entrance, the penetration of his word, it brings light, gives me a grasp and a comprehension of the ways of God. Psalms 119, verse 130. But here we go. The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Our dread, the Lord is the re refuge and str stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Wow. Think about that. He said, you're mine. Who do you have to fear? You don't, you don't have to fear. It says this, God didn't give us the spirit of fear, but love, power, and what? A sound, well-disciplined mind. Verse 2, when the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, come up to eat up my flesh, they stumble and fail. And though a host, a great army, encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war arise against me, even then in this will I be content. Here it is. One thing have I asked of the Lord, and that will I seek and inquire for. And really... It, cry out with an earnestness, that's what he's saying, is that he would dwell, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord uh, in his presence all the days of my life. The shepherd's rod for this year is how to get into the presence of God. Psalm 1611, you will show me the pathway of life, and in your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand are what? Pleasures forevermore. We have got to learn to get into the presence of God and let the presence of God get into us. Remember what Moses said? Lord, if your presence doesn't go with us, don't carry us anywhere. It is only your presence that will make us unique. And we need to be unique. Don't you think? Oh, I got stories about being unique. Now, uh, here's one. You ready? This is, this is, years, this is years ago, but it, it's stuck in my mind. Uh, I get in the elevator. I'm in a, a, a hotel, and I'm, go I'm going to go over to a civic center and preach, and I get in the elevator, and I'm not, I, I'm not, uh, I'm not over there in the corner talking in tongues, I, I'm just standing there, and the door reopens, and guess who walked in? MC Hammer, the rapper, and he was famous then, oh, Hammer, so he comes in, and that guy that he had with him had a big, long head, you know, that hair that stick up like that, so I'm just, I, I'm standing over here, and he, he and me and his cohort was there. And so I'm, I'm, not, I'm not praying in tongues. I'm just glaring across like this. And here's what Hammer said. You ready? What's this? What is this? Why, it's the Holy Ghost, ain't it? I said, yeah, it is. He said, that's real, isn't it? I said, it's the realest thing in the world. Guess what he said? Come down here in the basement. I've got my bus. We're fixing to go do a gig. And my, I want you to come in and tell my people. So I go down and get on Hammer's bus. <laughs> Woo! 
You've never seen so much gold necklaces, and uh, I've never smelt such cologne in my life. <laughs> yeah. But, and old Hammer ended up preaching. Isn't that something? MC Hammer. That, you know, the, you can't touch this. You know, oh, good <laughs> Lord. But I, it's crazy how God will put you in, 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 in places. It really, really, really is. Yeah. But anyway, the Lord is my light, my salvation. When you said, seek my face, my heart cried out to you, yes, Lord, your face I'm going to seek. And I'm going to put a challenge on you. If you want your life and your family totally, totally re, uh, a makeover, spend a week, two weeks reading through Psalms 27. I mean reading through it. What? What would have happened to me had I not believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living? We need to see the goodness of the Lord. You look at TV now, all you see is chaos. But you look to him. When you said, seek my face, my heart cried out, yes, God, your face I'm going to seek. If we'll, if we'll glue our face to his, it'll change our face. They looked unto the Lord, and their faces were radiant. You can tell when people have been around God, haven't you? Yeah, I like that. I like it. Oh, man. Uh, I, I, I know some people that uh, they, they have such an anointing to just break things open. And I like that, don't you? We need way makers. We need people that can be, you know, no matter what the atmosphere is, when they step in. When you step into a room, the whole room ought to change. That's who you are. That, you know, it says, when it was noised abroad that Christ was in the house, there was not room enough to receive him. No, not so much as about the door. And they had to tear the roof down. Wow. You let it be known that he's in the house. See, that's what we got to do. Any miracle. You know what the Lord told me? He said, Bobby, the highest form of treason in ministry, the highest form of treason in ministry is to take the gifts I've given you to win people to me and use those gifts to win people to yourself. He said that's the highest form of treason. So we need to make sure whatever happens, we give him the glory. Don't, don't try to take the honor. Don't touch his glory. Listen, it is so important to give him the glory due his name. And any good thing that happens, you better believe this. It happened in spite of us, not because of us. It's just God's marvelous grace. And so you, I, I want to put you in a challenge to spend maybe three weeks studying Psalms 27. Get you a pen and just look at the words. When you said, seek my face, and then you look in the Bible where God says, seek my face, look continually, gaze towards him. They looked unto the Lord, and their faces were in line. Isaiah 26, 3, that will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed upon thee. See, and then write down about seeking his face. And just study that one little chapter in the Bible. I'll tell you what it will do. It will rejuvenate you. Don't you like to be rejuvenated? Did I tell you that God said he's getting to, ready to answer the prayer Paul prayed in Colossians chapter 1? That's one of the most, it's one of the most exciting things he told me in quite a while. He said, you tell the body of Christ I'm preparing to answer the prayer that Paul prayed in Colossians chapter 1 starting with verse 8. Well, can I read that to you? Yes, yes, Bobby. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay, I better read that. Colossians. You're going to Colossians, don't you? Colossians chapter 1. Look, look what it says, starting with verse 8. Paul has started a church in Colossi, Colossi, and he's getting a report back from one of his disciples how great the things are going there and how good it is and how they're zealously in love with the Holy Spirit. And look what it says here, starting with verse 8. This is a prayer that God said, I'm preparing to answer for all of my people. Look what it says. Also he informed us, of your love in the Holy Spirit. That's a little weak. It literally says in the Greek, your burning zealous love for the Holy Spirit. He said he informed us of your burning zealous love for the Holy Spirit. For this reason, your burning zealous love for the Holy Spirit. We also, from the day we heard of it, your burning zealous love for the Holy Spirit, have not ceased to pray and make special requests for you, asking that you might be filled with the full, deep, clear knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom in comprehensive insights into the ways and the purposes of God and in understanding and discerning of spiritual things. How many of y'all want that? Do you see that? Did you hear what I read? 
put that on the table. Well, I don't know. They got up them other mug shots now. But you know, look at it. God told me. God told me I'm preparing to answer this prayer. If you are zealously in love of the Holy Spirit, look at that. Comprehensive insights into the ways and the purposes of God in understanding and discerning of spiritual things that you may walk, live, and conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully, fully pleasing to Him and desiring to please Him in all things, bearing fruit in every good work and steadily growing and increasing in and by the Word of God and insights with and acquaintances and recognitions. Oh, boy, isn't that something? You don't have to stagnate. Get in Colossians chapter 1 and go ahead and read through that. Oh, we pray that you may be invigorated. Whoa. Well, I'm so tired. I pray you'll be invigorated. Do you see it? That's verse 11. We pray that you might be invigorated and strengthened with what? All power according to the might of his glory to exercise every kind of endurance and patience and perseverance. Oh, man, and the perseverance. Just keep on keeping on no matter what it looks like and forbearance with joy. Study it. Get it. Get your pencil. Yeah, there we go. We pray that you may be what? Invigorated. That means stimulated from the inside out. Now, the world we're living in, they try to invigorate themselves. They'll pour a line of cocaine. They'll drop a pill. They'll take a shot. That's, that's the counterfeit. The genuine is he invigorates us from the inside out. Wow. They ain't nothing. They ain't no high like that. I'm telling you. I've been there. I'd break in the hospitals, get their drugs, shake them up in a sack and take them. That's true. That was the devil trying to erase my mind. You know what I mean? But God's got a plan. Now, I want you to study that. Okay, let's just look at it real quick. We pray that you... Who? Who? Yeah. You may be invigorated and strengthened with what? All. All power according to the might of his glory to exercise every kind of endurance and patience and perseverance and forbearance with joy. Wow. And boy, it talks about being strengthened. I want you to spend time getting invigorated. Now, isn't that something? Have you ever seen them they get in these clubs and they'll take a, you know, trying to get, you know, swingy? Good gracious. We need to be invigorated by the Holy Ghost. I mean that. I like to get around people that enjoy the Holy Ghost. Well, I don't know. I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a little bit skeptical. Well, just forget walking with God. You can't, you can't get with God without the Holy Ghost. No man come to the Father except the Spirit draw him. We need the Holy Ghost power. That's what, that's what separates us from anything else. You say, well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a little more dignified than that. No, no. You've got a religious spirit and it needs to be broken off of you. That's, that's what the deal is. You've got a hunger and thirst after, this, after what we're talking about here. You've got to be like David, Psalms 27. What? What would have happened to me had I not believed that I would see? That it would materialize the goodness of God in the land of the living. God wants to show his goodness. What is my favorite verse in the Bible? Nahum 1, 7. God is good. A stronghold in the day of trouble. And he knows those that are trusting him. I preached a message on Nahum. They built the road where my house is. And uh, they, they named it Nahum Road. And I'm so thankful it says God is good, not that he was or he's going to be. Right in the middle of your mess, he's good. And he's a very present help in a time of trouble. Yeah, Nahum. I like, I like to study Hebrew names, don't you? Uh, the, and the Lord told me to study all the names of the, uh, David's mighty men, their Hebrew names. And we find out the character and the conduct that people should have in these last days. Pretty, pretty wild. So I wrote a book about it, Dread Champions. See, I think we've been too sissy. Yeah, well, if I did that, I don't know what in the world would happen. You know what a pastor told me? So help me. A pastor said, oh, Brother Connor, I would be so afraid just to turn loose and let the Holy Spirit have his way in my church. No telling what would happen. I said, settle down, brother. I can tell you precisely what will happen. 
Jesus Christ will be glorified. That's what Jesus said. He shall glorify me. He'll take up mine, reveal it to you. See, the Holy Spirit is on a mission and a mandate to glorify the Lamb of God. We need to ask the Holy Ghost to be our teacher. And he can do it. He can do it. It's, it's the craziest thing. Oh, man. I, uh, just about the time I think, well, I've got this thing figured out. The Lord will say something to me that I'll go, I don't, I, I barely know him. I, I'm telling you, his wonders are far. It's amazing. Uh, he told me, he said, I'm going to show you your tasks for the rest of your life. And even in throughout eternity, you'll never have finished it. That's pretty daunting. It says, I want you to go and look into the, the, the fathom, the, uh, fathom the deepness of God. And it says you can't. See, one of the great benefits of heaven is when we get to heaven, guess what? God is going to continue to un unfurl his majesty to us, his glory to us. Remember Lampoon Vacation? Chevy Chase? He got to the Grand Canyon, jumped, jumped out, and go, yep, yep, jump back in the station wagon. That ain't how we're going to do heaven. God, for endless ages of eternity, will begin to reveal more of himself. And that's why those angels now, they go, holy, holy, holy. It's not, you're not going to have a burnout in heaven. You're not going to be bored. I'm telling you. I want you to start taking over this planet. Genesis 1.26. That's in the Bible. And it tells God's original intent. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. It says this. God, the Holy Ghost, God, Jesus, and God the Father were talking. And it's, they, it says, they said, let us make man in our own image. And let's give them kingdom control. We've got it. See? Isn't that cool? And he's already made us kings and priests. Revelations 1, 5, and 6. Unto him that loved us. Oh, there, there's a, Ephesians. God said, let us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, make mankind in our own image and after our own likeness and let them have complete what? Who's got it? Me and you, what we got? Complete authority. Wow, whatever we bind on earth will have been bound for us in heaven. I mean, we, it, listen, we can declare it illegal and bind it. Oh, you, you can see it there, Genesis 126. The birds of the air and tame beasts and or everything on the earth. Oh, boy. But God wants us to get a little bit more militant. You know, we, we don't have to sit back and let the devil just take over the world. Resist him, bind him. Uh, the Bible says now, N-O-W, now, are we ambassadors for Christ? So I said, okay, if I am now an ambassador for Christ, I want to know, number one, what in the heck is an ambassador? And the Greek word, uh, word means one sent out with authority. Our next question is, how much authority do I have? Answer, same amount as the one that sent me. How much authority does Jesus have? All power, all authority. See, we've got to shake ourselves and realize who God made us to be. Revelations 1, 5, and 6. Unto him that loved us, washed us from our sins in own, his own blood, and made us kings and priests. And the Bible says in Ecclesiastes, the word of a king has authority and power. Yeah, instead of mumbling around, now, oh, God, I don't know. You know, it seems like my children are drifting away. Bind that. Don't, don't set up for that. Just the, believe what the Bible said. Train up a child in the way they're to go. Here's a great verse about your family. You ready? Yes, buddy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Here it is. Isaiah 44, 3 and 4. I will pour water upon him that is thirsty, floods upon dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon your descendants, and they will spring up like willows by a fertile river. See, Mom and Dad, if you're hungry and desperate for God, your children will flourish. That's cool, isn't it? Isaiah 44, 3 and 4. I like that. Psalm 112, verse 2 said, The offspring of the upright will be mighty in the earth. I looked up the, the Hebrew word mighty there. It means they will advance swiftly and take charge. Our offspring. Aren't you, don't you want to hand this thing off better than we found it? Well, we better get busy, hadn't we? We better get busy. I, what time of day is it? Well, oh, man, when I leave here, I'm going to go to a... Moravian Falls and do a meeting. Oh, good gracious. There at 
Bob Jones is buried there. Man, I tell you, it's pretty amazing. Uh, it really is. The, the Moravians kicked the heavens over there. It's a great place for revelation. And so we're going to do a school there about empowered by God. And there's already several hundred right, signed up to come. And it's out, in this, it's out in the mountains, you know. But I like this. I like it. I like the solitude of it. Uh, plus, I like the fact that people that come there, they come there hungry for God, desperate for a word from God. And God will speak to you. You believe that? I, 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 I've, I've been preaching before, and when I get through, somebody run up and say, Do you have a word for me? I said, I just gave you a whole bunch. <laughs> See? That's right. And one of the things God told me says, don't let your gift be used to fertilize people's laziness. Tell them to search the word for themselves. Because, listen, everybody wants a word. The word is, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he's near. Let the unrighteous man forsake his way. Listen, it's time to get serious about God, isn't it? About putting him first. Don't you think? Why, well, sure. I got a wonderful anointing on me. I can break barrenness off of any person. So if you're here, your family's here, then you're incapable of having children, we'll pray a little prayer over you, and uh, you, you better figure out how many you want. <laughs> That's true. I can, I can break barrenness off of any person. I can break sleep disorder off of any person. That's true. One of my friends, he had, he had this mud racing uh, truck is a big money and all this kind of stuff and he and his wife couldn't have children or didn't have so he came to me he heard me and he said uh, Bobby we've been trying and trying to have children can't have children they said they said if you pray for us I said yeah I said how many you want he said I don't want to I, I, I just I just want one of those I said Lord Jesus I pray you'll break any kind of curse and open the womb and make it fruitful so guess what uh, they didn't get pregnant for a little while. And here's what they said. Bobby must have meant that we would adopt. That's what I, Now, I didn't say Bobby says to go adopt. I said, God will give you a child. And guess what happened? They go to an adoption agency, and they get a little girl, and the little, her little twin brother came with her. Two, two, they adopted. Now, here he is. He had race trucks and all this kind of mud racing trucks and all of that. And so they got two babies, adopt them, and they're tickle pink. And they're on their way back home. And his wife said, <coughs> honey, pull over. And opened the door, and she, <laughs> she had morning sickness because she was pregnant. So they ended up with three. Now, it, it sounds good. And he met me and said, Bobby, I want to, I want to. Why didn't you tell me they cost so much money? You know. <laughs> he was selling his big monster trucks and stuff like that. But he got his babies. Isn't that something? It's just pretty amazing. God, we have not because we ask not. God wants to answer your prayers. And I, I quoted that verse earlier. Uh, if you, if you uh, obey the prophets, you'll receive a prophet's reward. What in the world is it? It's the deepest desire of your heart granted by the power of God. That's what it is. Well, we got to go. Okay. Let's think about some stuff. Just a second. You want to? Uh, one thing I know for sure, God is going to call the rebellious back. There, there, there's, some, there's some that have just said, I'm giving up on all of that. I'm going to do it my way. And you watch this. Remember the guy said, I don't like the way you're running things. Father took his leave, wasted his substance in riotous living. Remember that? Found himself in the hog pen. They wouldn't even give him slop. Then he kind of goes, good God, my father has servants living better than me. And some of these rebellious ones are going to come to themselves and say, listen, this is not the life for me. And they're going to beat a path back to the father's house. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Oh, boy. Do you, uh, how do you see the Lord? See, his presence is here right now. His presence is. You can tell when he comes. Well, you, you need to just say, Lord, I don't want to be distracted and disturbed by the things of this world. I want to get into a realm 
that's above this realm. And I'm telling you, you can, it can happen to you. And in 2 Kings 6, 16, 17, it says that you can uh, pray that the eyes of your, that you'd have revelatory eyes. And in Ephesians 1, 17 and 18, it says, I pray that the eyes of your heart will be flooded with revelatory light. You will have a grasp and a comprehension of the ways of God. I'll tell you up front, you can see further with these eyes than these eyes. The eyes of your heart, it says in the Bible, he will light my lamp and it'll flood my whole life with light. Let's walk around a while. I'm not through talking. Good. I don't feel like screaming much, but I could if we had to. How you doing? Uh, you're doing better than you think. Yes, you are. Your hearing is going to increase tremendous, okay? I just dug out that thing with my finger. What do you do? I'm an en engineer for Enbridge. Enbridge. I don't know what that is. A what? Oil and gas. Oh, my. Tell them to bring the prices down. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, I don't know. Our brilliant president said, cut off the pipeline. You know. Uh, man. Hmm. Well, okay. I'm just back here stalking you. <laughs> yeah, not really. But uh, some of you need to start a business, and you don't know what to do, pray. And he'll show you. He'll give you little sections and shots of it, and then when you put them all together, when you string them together, it'll, it'll make a... What he does, he offers you something like a tapestry, and if you look at it just from the bottom, you go, oh, well, I, this is, ain't nothing but a bunch of knots. If you turn it over, there's the diagram. You understand it? Is that what you... When you embroidery... That's it. I'm, I'm into this style of stuff, you know. Yeah, yeah. What do you do? Ministry business. Ministry and business. Yep. All right. How's it going? Good. Good. I'll tell you what will happen. People are desperate for wisdom. And they find out God will share his wisdom with you. You'll be so busy you can't turn around. I'm telling you. That's true. And we ought to be operating under that anointing of the sons of Issachar. It said they had understanding of the times to know what the people of God should be participating in. I like this kid here. How old are you? How old are you? What? 21. 21. I wasn't in church when I was 21. I was incarcerated somewhere. <laughs> yeah. That's true. Yeah. But anyway, God bless you. God's going to show himself good to you. You, you've said, God, if you're really real, I, w I want to know. Well, you're going to be absolutely assured he's real. You're going to be assured that he's who he says he is. He's not a fake. He's not a fraud. He's the most real thing in the whole universe, Jesus, okay? And that'll help things. All right. You sure are pretty. What's your name? Gabriella. Oh, boy. You're absolutely wonderful. Here's what the Lord Jesus says to you. You can do anything he puts in your heart to do, okay? You'll be successful at it. Okay, so dream big, okay? All right. Okay. It, don't you like little children? They're pure. Yeah. They're not, you know, just... It, a lot of guys are trying to figure things out. You know, I, what do you do? See, if I was prophetic, I'd know. I, that's when I said shocking, wasn't it? Remember, he said he's a retired electrician. Did I tell you when I got shocked? Uh, Y'all don't want to hear it. Uh, you know, I don't know about, I've been married for all these years, but you still can't figure women out, can you? No. And here's what happened. My wife, we have a home in Texas. My wife says, I want us to move the washer and dryer room out of there over here to this room. I said, why? She said, I want to change that room, and I want the washer and dryer room over here. So, watch this. Pride goes before a fall. The Lord said, and at that time we had a man in our church named Gary Johnson. He was a handyman. That's how he made his living. He could do anything. He could fix anything, electric, uh, mechanical, anything. 
and now we've got to move the dryer and the washer to another room. And the Lord said, call Gary Johnson. And it hurt my feelings. That's what he said. Call Gary Johnson. I said in arrogance, I got this. He said again, call Gary Johnson. I just put up a, a thing. No, So I, I thought I'm going to start with the dryer first. And I thought that I'm, you know, it's electricity, 200 and something volts stuck in a. So I thought I better go over there and find the electrical box and turn them all off. And see, I'm in a, and then I'm in the dark. You see, all the lights are hooked to that thing. And so anyway, I get a flashlight. And I get down there to take the plug out. Uh, you've seen a washing machine plug. I'm hot and sweaty because the air conditioner went off when the power went out. I'm down there fighting this, and it's got big old wires and stuff. And I've got it, I've got it, I've got it loose from the wall, and I'm pulling it up like this. You know, pulling it up like this, trying to undo the screws like that. I got it up against my sweaty belly. And it slipped out of my hand, this contraption. And it goes over there to the wall and hits a, a brass pipe and fire shoots up like this. <laughs> I've still got it in the house to remind me about being stubborn. It shot up like this. And see, I, I had 220 volts hooked to my stomach. And the Lord said to me, he said, Bobby, I had mercy on you. You're supposed to be laying there blue dead from being, being electrocuted. He said, I had mercy on you. Call Gary Johnson. I like to wore the phone out getting jerk Gary. But isn't that something? Uh, it, it kind of offended me like I can do something, but boy, apparently I couldn't. It's a miracle. You know, th that's what Gary said. He said, Bobby, this is a valid miracle. He said, the moment that you grounded this out, it should have electrocuted you. And when it hit, it jumped out of my hands and hit the wall. It, it blew a blue fire. I left that thing on the wall uh, so it would remind me that, you know, don't get out of your lane. You understand that? See, Gary don't do meetings, but he does washer movings, you know. But you see what I'm talking about? See, God had anointed him to do that, just like God anoints me to do what I do. Well, anyway, I, I'm not a handyman. I'm a, oh, goodness. I'll tell you what you don't want to do. You don't want to paint the inside of your house with this, uh, it, you know, it's real paint. And it's got an odor in it. And uh, you, you need ventilation. Yeah. We, we, it, it's, it's crazy. We, I, I put 50-something gallons of paint on my, in my house. Painting. I didn't know you were supposed to take the, the doorknobs off. I just painted over them. <laughs> That's the truth. It's the craziest thing you've ever seen. I got in the bathroom was painting. I, oh, it felt like the old days, you know, when you was at Stone. Because it was... I was in there with that chemical stuff. But anyway, y'all don't want to hear all that. And my wife, I would paint stuff, and she would get the sander and sand it off. I mean, oh, I'd paint it good. I said to her, don't you sand another thing I've painted. Boy, that sounded so good, didn't it? I come in from going to get a hamburger, and I hear, now, me being kind and soft and gentle, I run up to her. I grab that sander out of her hand. I jerk the plug out of the wall, and I take off. We had a fish pond in the backyard, and I'm, I'm headed to the backyard at a full gallop, going to throw the sander in the fish pond, and they had put some slicky plastic paper down. I'm running full gallop, and I hit that paper. Listen. I, my head, feet go up above my head. My rear end hits so hard. My head hit. Things are going. Meow, 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 meow. <laughs> and so guess what? Me and Carolyn just laid in the floor and laughed. You know, because. But uh, it saved the sander anyway. <laughs> Boy, I tell you what. I want you to enjoy your family. Okay? I really mean that. Enjoy them. Spend time with them. Do some things that they enjoy. Have you ever noticed women like to shop but not buy nothing? <laughs> you know? Oh, look at that. 
you want it? No. You know. And then we're four miles down the, the mall, and she goes, let's go back and get that skirt. <laughs> I said, I'm going to the car. I'll pick you up at the door, you know. Anyway, we've been married a long time. I'm telling you, to be honest, just dead straight honest, she's the best Christian I've ever met in my whole life. She's the realest, most authentic person I've ever met. I'm, I'm talking about my wife, Carolyn. I mean it. I am not exaggerating. I have never seen anybody that exudes the love of God for people like she does. And, man, people love me because they love her. But anyway, <laughs> she's something. Anyway, I know we've got to go. And uh, you ready? Are you ready? What about you? Are you ready? Now, what are we going to study? Psalms, Psalms 27. We're going to get a notebook. And get a pencil. We're going to turn off the TV. We're going to unplug the phone. And we're going to study it. Now, I, I like the Amplified Classic. But other translations are okay. The reason I like Amplified Classic uh, is in Psalms 92.10. The King James in Psalms 92.10 says this. My horn shall be exalted like the horn of a unicorn. Wait a minute. I ain't never seen no unicorn. <laughs> Psalms 92.10, old King James, I shall be anointed with, uh, my, my horn shall be exalted and like the horn of a unicorn. And, but I like the Amplified Classic. Look what it is. Yeah. Okay, Amplified Classic. But my horn, emblem of excessive strength and stately grace, you have exalted like that of a wild ox. Don't you like that? All right, okay, there it is. You can see it, that of a wild ox. I am anointed with fresh oil. You need, we need Psalms 92.10, don't we? Fresh oil anointing. Okay. Anything else? That's good. I think you could write a song. I'm serious. Yeah. You, you, you hear him playing? I'm jealous of that. Can't, I can't play a radio. But anyway, I had a good time. I hadn't been here in three years, I think. Good gracious. Oh, man. What in the world did you do during the pandemic? Well, here's what I did. I did 480-something uh, videos. That's what I did. And I did almost that many Zoom calls. I was like a cage monkey, man. Because <laughs> I'm always traveling, you know. But it's a wonderful way to reach people. And so that's why I want you to see the studio and get puts what's in you out in the airwaves, okay? All right, anything else? I want to pray with you, okay? The effectual favor prayer of a righteous man availeth much. That's what the Bible said. That's what the Bible said. I was down on Morningstar. I don't know, 2,000 people in the room, maybe more than that. That's when they had the barn. And the Lord said, I want you to get up. It's 2 o'clock in the evening. I want you to get up and say, hey, how do you like this rain? I looked out the window and I said, God, we've got a problem. It ain't raining. He said, the problem is you hadn't announced it. This is all true. You, you can look in Mar the archives of Morningstar. So I get up there and I go, hey, how do you like this rain? A clap of thunder came. It rained so hard, it rained through the roof. They'd have to set buckets down to catch streams of water coming through the roof in, in the barn at Morningstar. Isn't that something? There's something about the power of proclamation. And we've got to decree things. Decree that your children are coming home. Decree that you're going to be successful in what you put your hands to do. Psalms 91 90, is very important. said the angels are all around us. They'll help us. Aren't you glad? Well, I'm going to pray for you. Father, I thank you for our hungry hearts. I thank you for people that set aside time to come and gather and worship and cast our hearts and our crowns before you. Lord Jesus, we find you irresistible. We want to be more and more like you. I pray, Lord Jesus, that your Holy Spirit would search us and try us, see if there be any wicked way in us, and lead us in a way that's eternal and everlasting. Lord, we want to honor you with our lives. We want to so live for you. We'll be a verbal witness. We'll be a shining, bright beacon for those that are looking for life and light. Lord, I want to thank you for saving us, taking us out of the kingdom of darkness and putting us into the kingdom of light and love. We bless you, Jesus. Use us any way.
that will honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. Don't you want that?